Good evening. Good evening. Wait, welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Uh, my name is Jeff Enderly. I am serving uh, as a vacancy lead pastor here at St. Paul's and as a uh, pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in St. Clair. It's my privilege to share God's word with you today. Uh, and today we celebrate the Reformation. And uh, you're not going to get a, a, a long history lesson. It's not just uh, people bragging about their ancestors or their heritage. It, it is a point of, of godly pride to trace our spiritual heritage back to the Reformation, to, to see how the Lord used people throughout the history of the church to maintain the truth of the gospel. And that's really what we're celebrating this evening, the truth that our freedom is found in Christ and in him alone. That's the focus of worship this evening. Our opening hymn is number 862. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, love. Those who believe that they can be certain of their salvation because they have indulgence letters will be eternally condemned together with their teachers. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Any truly repentant Christian has a right to full remission of penalty and guilt, even without indulgence letters. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities, or as far as the Any true Christian, whether living or dead, participates in all the blessings of Christ and the church. This is given to him by God, even without indulgence letters. Our righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes from faith in Jesus Christ. Him 
true treasure of the church is the most holy gospel of the glory and the grace of God. should be exhorted to be diligent in following Christ their head through penalties, death, and hell, and thus be confident of entering into heaven through many tribulations rather than through a false security of peace. By the special authority of the office of the keys which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, I absolve you of your sins. This is just as valid and certain even in heaven as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We'll
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, protect and comfort them in all temptations, defend them against all their enemies, and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first Bible reading for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. In these verses, the Lord promises freedom. Freedom that comes completely from Him, that is completely one-sided in God's faithful promises delivered to you. Jeremiah 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, so I was a husband to them declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Bible reading from the Epistle to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Our freedom is found completely in Christ and what He has done, adding anything to that, any of our efforts, any of our merits, would destroy the grace that is completely ours, completely based on Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 5. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Through the, through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to John, chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. We focus on these verses in today's sermon. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to invite any of the younger children to come to the front row for a children's message. I have a book, and it has a lot of pictures in it, and just try to guess here. What do you think that picture is right there? Do you have any guesses what that might be? Here's another one that's a, kind of at nighttime with lights on it. It's a big stone building, actually a bunch of buildings. It's called a, a castle. When do you think you might need a castle? When you're Maybe when someone's out to get you and they're chasing after you, would you feel safer inside of a castle? Do you ever do that? Do you play and make a fort at home? If you make a fort at home, then you're, then you're safe inside there and no one can get to you. Um, this, is a, this is a castle known, known as the Wartburg Castle, and that's where Martin Luther went um, for a little bit of time so he could be safe there and he could be protected. Um, but in a lot of ways, uh, we sang a song just a minute ago, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, right? If God is kind of like a, a castle, right? We, we feel safe with God. We know that he's going to protect us, he's going to be there for us. 
And a lot of people will tell you that if you run away from God, that's when you'll be safe. If you, if you go away from God, if you do whatever you want, if you do whatever you think you should do, that's when you'll be safe. But that's, that's a lie of the devil. And Jesus says we will be free in him. We have his truth. Do you know who Jesus is? The truth is Jesus is, is not just an important person. He is God. And what did Jesus do for you? Did he live for you and die for you and rise again? He did all those things, and he did it for you so that you can be free, so that you can be with God, and you can be saved with Jesus. And so you know that's where you belong. You belong with Jesus. You can say, I am a child of God. God loves me. Uh, God is always with me. So we can say, God, you are my castle. You are my fortress. I feel safe with you. Let's say a prayer to Jesus. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be our safety, our protection, for living perfectly for us and to give up his life uh, for us. Help us to run to Jesus and know that he is our safe place and that we are always safe with him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. You can back to your seats now. For the hymn of the day, hymn number 877, uh, we'll have our, our vocalist introduce the, the hymn, singing verses, uh, stanzas one and two, and then the first refrain, and then you're invited to join in and sing with us after that.
In the name of Jesus, amen. I've spent more time in jail than I'd like to admit. I don't like talking about it. But when I would go in through that visitor's entrance and go toward the desk where you hand in your identification, you sign in, after a while, they knew me and greeted me by name before I even got to the counter. It became very familiar. Sit here in this seat until the corrections officer came out and called your name. Listen for the buzz and the click and the heavy metal door swinging open and then listening as it clanks shut behind you as you're escorted as you're escorted to a little cubicle and sit in a chair in front of a very thick plexiglass window phone hanging on the wall waiting for another corrections officer to bring the person you're visiting to the other side. I'll never forget, no matter how many times I went, how much I appreciated being outside. No matter what the weather was like, the, to get out, get, grab, deposit that name badge, that visitor badge, to go out the entrance again and to breathe in that fresh air. The same air that would be in the exercise yard behind razor wire. To pause and, and to take in the scenery, usually just the parking lot to the jail. Just feet away from where other people were incarcerated. But it felt like a different world. The more time I spent there, the more I valued my time outside. And I can only imagine as a visitor what it, what it must have felt like to not have a choice, to not be able to leave, to be incarcerated against your will and to be powerless to go wherever you want. In John chapter 8, Jesus extends an invitation to find freedom, to enjoy freedom. Jesus addresses people like you and me. He, he wants to confront us with an uncomfortable truth about our spiritual condition, to come to grips with the self-deception that we so often settle for, to realize the captivating nature of the lies that we so often all for the captivation that robs us from true freedom. Freedom that is found in the truth of Jesus. The truth that Jesus gives to us. That truth that enables us to step outside and to breathe in the gifts that God has given to us. To look around and appreciate the emancipating power of freedom. Imagine Jesus was talking to a group of people a lot like us. It says in here that, that, that to the Jews who believed him, this was a conversation that had been going on for quite a while. And Jesus had, had been giving, giving in that conversation some very confrontational things about, about what the crowd had assumed to be true. And then he was helping them to see who he really was, his true identity. And, and we know that there were some in that crowd that held in faith to Jesus as the Messiah, the promised Savior. So Jesus attempts to take them deeper in that relationship with him. He, he says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. To have and embrace that message of Jesus sounds appealing to us, to to be and to remain a disciple of Jesus 
seem something attractive to our ears, but not everyone was impressed. Actually, there were some people who were quite insulted. Not quite sure if maybe they were the ones who were kind of curious, uh, curious, just listening to Jesus, and, and just something snapped in them that they, they no longer, that this was too much, that, that they, they couldn't tolerate this. O- or if sprinkled among that crowd, there were, there were critics of Jesus, people who were openly hostile, waiting to, to jump onto something Jesus said and to attack him. That they find it offensive that Jesus is offering freedom. And here's what they say. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? They're taking issue with this invitation. They're insulted by this invitation that Jesus would offer them freedom. Now, they're not saying, they're not attempting a revision of history, saying that their ancestors had never been slaves in Egypt, that, that their forefathers had never gone into exile in Babylon, that the Romans were currently occupying their country. What they are saying is, spiritually speaking, they've always been independent, tracing their heritage back to Abraham. They say, we, no matter what, we are God's chosen People. Their liberty was assured because of who they thought themselves to be. Now, today isn't primarily a history lesson, but at the time of Jesus, the, the problem was this nationalist pride that held on to that spiritual heritage. And, and rejected Jesus' offer of freedom. If you, if you forward in history 1,500 years, it was a different situation, but a different confrontation on the verge of the Reformation. When, when Martin Luther entered the spiritual scene, the prevailing beliefs there, people... Uh, we're, we're caught up in a spiritual performance mentality. Um, a prominent Reformation scholar named Alistair McGrath summarizes the prevailing beliefs, um, saying the basic principle is that when man fulfills his obligation to God by doing what lies within him, God will rest- respond by bestowing the gift of justifying grace. The church was dangling pilgrimages and prayers, indulgences and acts of penance as a carrot before pious people. They could earn freedom for their souls by placing themselves under the authority of the church, by by submitting to obedience, to doing whatever the church said. Now today, there's a different... There's a different reason why people today are predominantly insulted by Jesus' offer of freedom. Today, we're busy telling ourselves that we don't need anyone else to provide freedom for us. We're free on our own. Actually, so many people today believe that it's placing yourself under religious teaching that robs you of freedom. Once you place yourself under the authority of of holy writings, of ancient dogmas, that's when you are shackled and restricted and and prevented from being true to yourself. The only way to provide human flourishing and happiness in life is by breaking free of all stuff. There's a certain timeless appeal in that, in that sense of pride that, that maintains that sense of freedom. No one likes someone else telling them what to do. We, we don't want anyone else telling us what we have to do. When the buzzer sounds at the end of the day, you let out a sigh of relief, not just because you no longer have to be constrained to your desk inside a school, when the last hours elapse before Christmas break or summer vacation, 
It's not just a relief that you don't have school, but it's you don't have to listen to teachers telling you what to do and what not to do. You don't have to face authorities from the administration who, who are handing out punishments when you do your own thing and you break the rules. It's not just students in grades K through 12 who tell themselves that, that freedom can be found in breaking free, in doing whatever we want. When we decide, when we get the final say, we feel empowered to choose who to listen to and who we should ignore. Delusions of spiritual independence entrap us in a slavery of false freedom. Believing the lies lead to self-imprisonment. Anticipating the 500-year anniversary of when uh, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the Castle Church door in Wittenberg. There was a cover article in Christianity, Christianity Today, and the title was, 500 years after Luther, we still feel the pressure to be justified. The author, the author went back and talked about the, the alarming rise, and this was before COVID, the rise in mental health, serious mental health crises and even suicide among high-performing Ivy League college students. That in the freedom to, to be whoever you want to be, there is a deception. To feeling like you have to live up, that it's, 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 it's all the pressure on you to make a difference in the world, that you are, are following a standard that keeps shifting and that keeps changing, it keeps rising, that you are once again shackling yourself to everyone else's expectation. You are you're facing the burdens to, to find freedom on your own terms. We find ourselves in this prison of disappointment and despair. The gentleman that I went to visit the most often at jail... Uh, one of the first times I went to visit him, I, I remember him saying that he was praying to get out of jail early. Um, he, he was hoping that a couple of the charges would be dropped against him, that they would give him the minimum sentence. He asked me to pray the same thing, and I actually prayed the opposite. I didn't tell him that. I don't know his heart. I didn't know what was in his heart. But I do know, by, based on what he was telling me, that he wasn't ready that, that he would go out of jail and he would be doing the same dangerous things. It would be a danger to himself, to the other people in the community. My wife and children are driving on those same roads. He wasn't ready yet. In jail, the breakthrough happens when an inmate realizes he is right where he belongs. When he acknowledges his sentence is exactly what he deserves. When he stops making excuses and stops trying to justify himself. When he finally acknowledges his responsibility, so then he realizes that changes need to be made. So he doesn't end up right back in jail. Or worse. Jesus bursts the bubble of anyone trying to find freedom on their own terms. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. The lies we fall for don't lead to liberty. Jesus exposes that lie of self-sufficiency that traps us in a slavery of sin. Jesus exposes that self-deception inhabiting every human heart. Jesus challenges the prevailing assumption that, that take offense at any claim of truth or any claim of authority over our lives. So he can pronounce the emancipation from that slavery to sin. Acknowledging your condition allows you to look to Jesus. Jesus promises, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. True freedom isn't found in running away from religion, but in running to Jesus. 
Jesus who voluntarily constricted his own life. Jesus who willingly placed himself under God's law. Jesus who left his permanent home in heaven to place himself under God's same standards of every human performance. Jesus who never tried to outrun run away from God's requirement. Jesus, the only truly free person is because, because he never committed even one single sin. You don't need to place yourself under the, the authority of Scripture because it claims to be true. You don't need to listen to the claims of Jesus because he says so. But listen to what Jesus says because he follows through. Look at his life. Look at his actions. And look at the freedom that Jesus brings to free you from the lies that are trapping you. That, that breaks free from the self-deception of trying to find that freedom in yourself. Truth is a person. Freedom is found in him. Authority from Jesus is meant to establish and enable true freedom. True freedom is not found in an escape from God, but from finding in Jesus the truth that sets us free. Jesus promises there's real power in this truth. Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth is Jesus accomplishes for you what you are incapable of doing on your own. The truth is Jesus embraced the authority of God's law, to shield you from every accusation of all of your disobedience. The truth is, Jesus has done everything God demanded of every human being. And Jesus absorbed in himself the punishment for everything that you failed to do right. The truth is, Jesus offered his life as a perfect sacrifice. The truth is, Jesus extends to you his victorious resurrection from the dead. Jesus extends that truth, that victory, so that you can hear the verdict innocent on all charges. When he exhaled that last breath, it is finished. So you can hear the doors of heaven swinging open for you. So you can have the guarantee that God goes with you into your daily existence. His truth goes with you. His word frees you, enables true discipleship, and brings you true freedom. You know, Martin Luther never, never intended to take on the church. His goal wasn't in, in, in fixing organizations or institutions or challenging hierarchies and authorities. His passion was much more personal. It was all about soul care. He was primarily concerned about bringing the consolation of the gospel to souls that were crushed by the law, knowing that they hadn't done enough, knowing that they were incapable of doing enough to please God, knowing that he could bring this consolation to souls that were trapped on this never-ending treadmill of trying to do more, to be good, to measure up, and never arriving there. Martin Luther wanted to know the freedom that he had found in Jesus Christ. To breathe in the fresh air, to know that Jesus had done everything for him. That he had done everything perfectly, and that he does it all for you as well. To value the ongoing gifts that Jesus provides for you in the truth of his word. To celebrate the fact that since Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Now to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen.
continue with the prayer of the church. Lord, our refuge and strength, we gather to worship and praise you for your ongoing work of reformation in your church. Lord, to you alone be glory. God of grace, in unfathomable love, you pitied us sinners and sent your Son as our substitute to deliver us from sin, guilt, death, darkness, and despair. For your grace, Lord, to you alone be glory. By your grace, you sent your Spirit to call us to repentance. Your powerful gospel rescued us from rebellion and fills us with faith in you, the true and living God. For save me, Lord, to you alone be glory. By your grace, we are heirs of your eternal word and trustees of the inspired scriptures through which you proclaim your saving truth to every generation. By the scriptures, you overthrew the darkness of those who perverted your teachings and restored to your church the message of salvation, salvation by grace alone. For the holy scriptures, Lord, to you alone be glory. In these last days, Lord Jesus Christ, protect your little flock. We are like sheep living among fierce wolves. Satan stalks us like a roaring lion. Defend us from false teachers who twist your word to satisfy the latest longing. Never in the history of the world has your holy word been so accessible. We lack only the zeal to treasure your restored truth with, with lives of faithful Bible study. For with a noble character to search the scriptures daily, hear our prayer, O Lord. As we celebrate the Reformation that restored your pure gospel to your church, we also celebrate our common confession of the pure gospel in word and sacrament. For this unity of faith, we give you thanks, O Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. In thanksgiving, for the many and amazing blessings restored to your church through the Reformation, we now commit ourselves to your care. Be our mighty fortress, our trusty shield and weapon. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our take this opportunity to gather our thank offerings to the Lord. While we do that, I encourage you to fill out a connection card. Uh, once you've filled it out, you can return it either in the offering plate as it goes by or in a basket on your way out of the sanctuary this evening.
Please stand for prayer. Bless Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Would you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings passed on to you. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word.
not aware of any additional announcements, any, anything that we need to point out, highlight. Otherwise, we wish you one. Happy Reformation Day to you all. We uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.